we okay this is the new seminar that is gonna Valeria is gonna tell us about. So she's gonna talk about the aspect of external interactive matter within an ambush on a senior model. And I guess I mean in my case I don't know the model but now I'm gonna learn what it is here. But it's a nice feature of the model. So okay. Okay. So good afternoon to everyone thanks for coming. Um so when when I say aspects of uh, strongly inter interacting matter, what uh, I have uh, in mind that I want to describe are uh, things, like, things like the one that I, I have in uh, these uh, pictures here, like uh, mainly the um, QCD phase diagram, um, useful to describe um, the physics of the the one at the top, okay. yeah. Um, like uh, the, the physics of the early universe, uh, physics of the uh, heavy ion collisions, and the, the, in particular the, the inner core of uh, some kind of uh, dense stars. But all this, all this physics can be summarized in the, in the QCD uh, phase diagram. So what I'm going to show you today is, is a model that is useful to describe the, the phase transitions that are uh, illustrated here. So um, first I, I, I'd like to say just a few words of uh, what, what we do to, to study those, uh, those transitions. And uh, so we are interested in the, in the phase transitions occur occurring uh, with uh, quark matter at finite temperature and density, I will uh, write it there, but also at finite density. So in order to describe those phase transitions, we need to uh, consider some features of QCD uh, in two different limits. Uh, first of all, the, the chiral limit where we don't have uh, where, where uh, we have massless quarks, and we know that uh, the QCD Lagrangian is invariant under these uh, two symmetries related to the isospin and baryonic number conservation, and we know that we have a symmetry that is spontaneously broken with this uh, breakdown of the this kind of symmetry, we have associated the pions of the, as the Goldson bosons, and we know that, that this symmetry is restored at high temperature and or density, and that would be associated with, with, this, with this line here. Um, <clears throat> the other parameters that we, we want to study in order to describe these phase, phase transitions are, for example, the quark anti quark condensate or the pion weak decay constant. Another, another uh, symmetry that we know that the, the Lagrangian of the QCD has in, in another uh, limit case, that is the, the pure gauge theory, is the, the symmetries of the triangle. And this is also a symmetry that is spontaneously broken at high temperature. And the, the other parameter that we can use for, for this transition is the, the trace of the Polyakov loop. The Polyakov loop is constructed as the, the Wilson thermal line. This is uh, the gauge field. This is the, the strong coupling constant, and this P means uh, path ordering. And it can be shown that the, the trace of the Polyakov loop is associated with the um, free energy of a single quark. And since uh, the free energy of, of, of a single quark is uh, infinite, we know that if quarks are confined, the trace of the Polyakov loop uh, has to be zero. And if quarks are deconfined, this energy will be finite and this uh, trace Polyakov loop will be different from zero. So these are the, the other parameters that we want to, uh, to know how to calculate. So 
the mall I'm going to talk about is the Nambu General Assembly Mall. I'm going to try to uh, describe it in its simple, simplest version. Uh, this model was uh, originally proposed by Nambu and Tonal Asinio in two papers in 1961 and it was uh, proposed as a model actually for nucleons and not for quarks. Uh, what they were trying to describe at that time was a, a mechanism uh, through which the nucleons acquire a high mass without breaking the chiral symmetry presented uh, in the Lagrange, present in the Lagrange. <clears throat> so this was the, the Lagrange of that model uh, uh, proposed in that time, where uh, C is the the nucleon, the nucleon field, M is the small bare mass of the nucleon. Uh, these are the Pauli matrices uh, acting in space, and G is the dimensional field coupling constant. So. What, what uh, we are going to see just in a minute is that uh, the, the main characteristic of this model is that the self-energy induced by these interactions that are uh, current invariant uh, interactions generates an effective mass which is uh, larger than this small bare mass and that it stays large even in the chiral limit <coughs> so that we can obtain um, massive nucleons, even if we start uh, with, a, with a chiral Lagrange. And another important feature of the model is that uh, the pion emerges as the Goldstone boson of the uh, spontaneously broken chiral symmetry. So, I really don't recall exactly why, but this uh, model uh, was, uh, was first proposed for, for nucleons and then People didn't use it anymore, I don't know <laughs> exactly why. But then, uh, when, when QCD was developed, that was after the, the, the introduction of this model, the model was reinterpreted uh, as a thematic quark model. So, uh, after the development of QCD, the, the nucleon field was replaced by a quark field um, and the, the, the Lagrange is exactly the same. So, just a comment here is that uh, here I, I keep the, the same interaction terms as the ones Namo Jonah Lasmio introduced uh, in, the, in the first place. But we can also have another uh, currently symmetric interaction term, terms there and there are many, there's a huge variety of uh, Nambu Jonah Lasinio type models that can be constructed this way. But we are going to, to see only this today. So, what do we do with this, with this Lagrange? If we work in the mean field approximation, that means uh, to linearize the interaction terms, we can rewrite the Lagrangian in this, in this way. We also assume that there is no pion condensation and this is why the condensate associated with this interaction term does not appear here. So once uh, we, we've done this mean field approximation, we recognize here the Lagrangian of, uh, of, of a, a part associated with, with, with a particle that has a constituent, we call it the constituent quark mass, that is uh, the bare quark mass plus something that has to do with the interaction. So the, the quark gets an effective ma mass due to, to the interaction. If we, if we uh, picture the Dyson equation as associated with this Lagrangian here, uh, what we see is how the, the propagator gets dressed by the interactions. And this is the expression for the quark condensate. And here this S is the effective propagator of the quark. This is why this M appears uh, also here. So if we, if we work out this expression, uh, 
um, we, we get to this new one, relation for the mass. So the constituent quark mass uh, has to be self-consistently obtained uh, from this expression. Mm, since, since this integral, integral is not convergent, uh, one, one needs to, to decide uh, which regularization prescription to use. And for instance, using a 3D cutoff, uh, one gets this expression for the mass. So, if, uh, if we rewrite this, in, uh, this expression, we can, we can write something like this. Uh, we put, uh, for instance, in, uh, let's think only about the, the, the chiral limit without the, the bare work mass. So, we are going to have that uh, we, we are uh, trying to solve something that is uh, something like this. And here we have a function of m over the cutoff. And this is something that is uh, much smaller than one. So, uh, from, from this expression that we have here in the platform, what we can see is that uh, we're going, we are going to have a solution for this equation for the mass. Um, of course, different from zero, which is always a solution in the, in the chiral limit. Uh, if the, the coupling constant is uh, bigger than some critical uh, coupling constant. So what we see here in this plot is that uh, the, the, the full line corresponds to the, to the chiral limit case. So if the coupling constant is below the critical value, the only solution for the equation is going to be m equal to zero and the, the core condensate is going to be zero. So in this case, we have the, um, not, 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 uh, not broken the chiral symmetry. Uh, but if we go to a coupling constant that is uh, above the critical value, we get uh, an effective mass for the quarks and a value for the core condensate that is different from zero, and so the, the chiral symmetry is broken. And so I think this is a, a good moment to say that the, mo the, the model will be properly defined not only by the Lagrangian, but also by the regularization prescriptions. There are many results that strongly depend on the way you regularize. And also that the parameters of the model are the bare, Work mass, the this coupling constant and the cutoff, and that they are fixed fitting the pi mass, the pi quick decay constant, and the value of the work condensate. <coughs> so, if we then uh, iterate the four point vertex, uh, we have the work and take work T matrix, and that. Uh, this matrix can be interpreted as the effective meson exchange between the external quark legs and it can be parameterized uh, in this way. So here we have the, um, the quark anti-quark polarization in the, M in the channel with the quantum numbers M that will correspond to the sigma meson or to the pions. So, if we have uh, this function, we then can obtain the, the meson masses and the coupling constants between the mesons and the quarks. Uh, the way to do this is of course finding the, the, the pole of the propagator and the derivative of the, of the polarization. 
and two important results here are that in the chiral limit uh, for the pine we obtain, obtain a mass equal to zero, to zero that uh, is in accordance with the Goldstone theorem and another uh, important thing is that uh, if uh, if this, this relation is fulfilled the um, polarization gets an imaginary part and this means that we have unstable mesons that can decay into a pair of quark and antiquarks so this means that uh, in this way this model is not confined in the quarks and this is quite a drawback for a model for quarks of course but uh, in, some, in some things that we want to explore, where the confinement is not the most important feature, uh, we can still use this model. And anyway, there are ways uh, to, to cure this, this drawback. <coughs> Another thing that can be calculated from, from this Lagrangian is the pine decay constant that can be obtained from the one pi and two vacuum matrix elements and there are uh, important relations known that, that are uh, satisfied uh, also from, from this, this Lagrangian uh, one of them is the generalized goldberg triman relation that is uh, fulfilled in the chiral limit and also in the first non vanishing order in M also, the, the gilman oaks renner relation is fulfilled. So, if I, if I want to study the QCD phase diagram, of course I have to go to non-zero densities and temperatures. And this is uh, something that can be done using standard techniques, techniques of the, uh, thermal field theory that I'm not going to explain in detail now <laughs> uh, but basically the, the replacement that one has to do when, when one wants to go from zero temperature and density to finite, zero, uh, to finite density and temperature is to replace the fourth mo uh, component of the momentum by the Matsubara frequencies and the chemical potential that uh, appears as a Lagrangian multiplier uh, in the Lagrangian and replace the integration over, over the fourth momentum by uh, the integration on the three momentum and the, the sum over the Matsubara frequencies so making this replacement one can calculate all the quantities I mentioned before, like masses, uh, decay constants, uh, quark condensate, but at finite uh, temperature and density. For instance, I wrote here the expression that one one gets for the for the mass if we if we make this replacement in the quark loop that enters uh, this uh, equation and. Here, this E is the on-shell energy of the quark and these two functions are the Fermi occupation number of quarks and anti-quarks. And if we want to describe the thermodynamics of this uh, kind of matter, what we would like to build is uh, the grand canonical potential and this is done starting from the Lagrangian building first the grand canonical partition function and using this relation for the, for the grand canonical uh, thermodynamic uh, function so here once again one, have, one has to linearize the interactions and to work uh, in the mean field approximation and if we do that what we get is a contribution of a Fermi gas of these uh, particles or quasi-particles with mass m plus 
this uh, term depending only on the masses and the coupling constant. Uh, now, if we with, with, uh, uh, if we stop here, what we have is the thermodynamic potential that will allow us to study the, the chiral restoration transition and only that, because from this we can, we can manage to, to find the, the mass and the pion with decay constant and the, the quark condensate that are the parameters for that transition. But if we also want to study the confinement and the confinement transition, what we can do is to couple our Lagrangian to the, to the Polyakov loop that I mentioned uh, on my first slide. So what we do here is to assume that quarks move in a, in a constant background color field that is uh, minimally coupled through the covariant derivative to the quarks. And we, we find the trace of the Polyakov loop that, as I said before, can be taken as another parameter for confinement. Now, if we are introducing this color field, we also need to introduce something that describes its uh, thermodynamics. So, what we are going to do is to introduce and add to our, to our thermodynamic potential a potential describing the thermodynamic of the Polyakov loop. And what are the characteristics of this uh, of these potentials? Here I have uh, plotted for, for, for two actually, but I'm, since I'm going to show you some results uh, that I obtained using only uh, one expression for the for this potential, I wrote only only that one here. Um, the so the, the characteristics of the, the potential that describe the thermodynamics of the Polyakov loop is that if we, we are at, at a low temperature uh, where, where quarks are confined, we need a potential that has a minimum in zero. Because if you, if you remember what I said earlier was that when the Polyakov loop is zero, we have quarks that are confined. But if we go to higher temperatures, um, this potential develops another minimum uh, that actually moves to higher values of the, of the Polyakov loop when we go to higher values of the temperature. And so uh, this minimum will be uh, the value of the of the trace Polyakov loop that we are interested in, uh, that will tell us that the that the quarks are the confined. I, I I don't know if that that is clear because what what we are uh, what we are uh, trying to to find is the value of the of the Polyakov loop that has the minimum 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 potential. So that will be uh, uh, the, 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 the physical solution, the one corresponding to the, to the minimum of the energy. <coughs> so, as I said, what we are going to do is to add the grand canonical potential associated only to the, to the uh, to the, to the quarks and the, uh, the, the, the one I just showed that is associated to the Polyakov loop. Mm, and we are going to look for the uh, values of the mass and the Polyakov loop that give us the, the minimum of the grand canonical potential. So what we, what we have to do is to solve this set of coupled equations. Uh, this one is exactly the same uh, that we that we had at the zero temperature, but here we have the the, uh, the replacement I told you we have to do when introducing the, the finite temperature. And and here is uh, what we are going to have is the derivative of this term, and actually. There is a 
contribution of this term as well because quarks are coupled to the Polyakov loop. But what we have to do is to solve these uh, two equations. And once we've done that, um, we have the values of m and the Polyakov loop that minimize the grand canonical potential, and with, with them we can find uh, the, the values of any other quantity we are interested in. Uh, the ones I wrote here are, for, for example, the quark condensate and also these two susceptibilities I defined here that are the ones that are going to be, uh, to be useful uh, to determine the, the phase transitions. Also, uh, once, once we've obtained these values and we know how to calculate the grand canonical potential, we can, we can calculate other thermodynamic uh, functions from this one, like the pressure, the entropy, the density of energy. Any questions so far? Sure. I have a nice question. What is uh, the susceptibility? The susceptibility, because if uh, we, are, we are trying to describe the phase transitions and we have our order parameters. So if the transition is of first order, what we are going to see is only a discontinuity on the transition. On the, uh, for instance, uh, I said that the work condensate is a good uh, order parameter for the, the kind of restoration transition. So, what does it mean? It means that if we are at a low temperature, where chiral symmetry is broken, we have a high value of the, of the condensate. But when we reach the transition, we find a, a discontinuity in this order parameter, and in the chiral limit, this goes to zero, and if we are not in the chiral limit, this goes to a small value. That is what works for something that can be seen here. Somehow. Yeah. Okay. I mean, these these are like this. Uh, this is the the non-zero region for the chiral condensate, and and this is this the in the chiral limit, and in the non-chiral limit, it has a small value. <coughs> but if this is if the if the transition is of first order, but if if it's not, if it's a crossover, what we what we want to see uh, is when when we have an inflection point in the in the order parameter, and that's why we need to know the the, the susceptibilities. So, uh, I'm going to show you some results here that I've obtained. Uh, actually, I, I wanted to show you um, so, something I calculated, <laughs> but with the local, with, the, with this simple model, I only have calculations in SU3. So not only the up and down case I I, I, I told you, but also including the, the strange work. So I'm going to ask you to ignore the first two <laughs> lines over there and just focus on this other two. So here with, with what we have is exactly what I explained here. So the, the full line is, uh, corresponds to the case where, where the model is coupled to a Polyakov loop and, and the dashed line is the simple Nambu channel assembly model. So the Actually, the mass, the core constituent mass and the condensate are uh, two quantities that differ only by a shift of the, of the bare quark mass. If you, I don't know, but we have here the condensate and here the mass. So they, they are both useful now uh, to describe the, the chiral restoration transition. So, 
So this I am showing here is for the case of uh, zero chemical potential, but this is something that can be done for different values of the chemical potential. So with this, uh, what I do is to look for the for the peak of the susceptibility. Sorry, these are other order parameters, but I look for the peaks of the susceptibility, and then I go to a higher uh, value of the chemical potential. Look also for the peak of the susceptibility, and then I'm I'm, I'm taking all the points uh, in the plane T T mu uh, where this chiral transition occurs. And in that way, I I can build this this phase diagram that I was interested in in the first place. Uh, so for for a region. In the, in the chemical potential, this transition is, is actually a crossover, but if, if we go to a, to a certain value of the, of the chemical potential, we start finding transitions that are all first order. <coughs> um, in this way, I build this line that is associated with the chiral transition. But I can do exactly the same for the deconfinement transition. In that case, what I have to look is the, the polyapo loop that is plotted here. That, as I said before, it's zero or has a small value when quarks are confined and then it approaches uh, one And we also look for the for the peak of the susceptibility to build this other line that corresponds to the, the confinement transition. So this is a result that is uh, uh, in agreement with uh, lattice QCD estimates because from lattice we expect that at zero chemical potential we are going to find the confinement and chiral restoration occurring at the at the same moment and the transition being a crossover. Um, something else I can I can study is the behavior of the of the meson masses as a function of the temperature. Here uh, I've plotted the the pi and mass, again, the dashed line is, um, I, I don't know if, again, or if it's the other way around, but, but the, the dashed line corresponds to the polyacob number general assembly model and the full line without the polyacob loop. We see here uh, also a, different, a difference that was, was uh, clear before that the one effect of the Polyakov loop is to make the transitions steeper and, and the transitions uh, occurring at, the, at a higher value of the temperature for the same chemical potential. So this is also observed here in the, in the pion mass. And what we see here, for instance, if we take this first green line and this first uh, red line that is the, the mass of the of the of, of one of the works. It says U here because also the, this this I did uh, considering the strange quark. Mm. So when the when the chiral restoration occurs, what we see is that the the pion mass uh, has already started growing, but from 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 there on, it uh, it, it approaches uh, the 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 thermal energy of a pair of quark and anti and uh, um, anti quarks. And so, with the with the pion mass, we can also uh, see where the the chiral transition occurs. And 
this uh, I, I, I choose one thermodynamic quantity to show you, as, as I said, that, uh, that we, we can calculate when we have this uh, thermodynamic potential. Uh, I choose the pressure and the square dots and these crosses are uh, lattice results. The red line uh, is associated with the Lambo John Alassini model without the without the polyacol loop and the green one uh, has the coupling to the polyacol loop. And the, the the first thing we can note is that the the Nambu without the polyacol uh, doesn't have a good behavior at uh, high temperature uh, and this is mainly because of the of the cutoff and that we, what, what we only have uh, at high energy uh, what, 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 what we only have is quarks and we, when we we are we are uh, not considering uh, anything at, at high enough temperatures uh, we have this uh, bad behavior for the temperature but when we include also the polyacoblu it is possible uh, to at least get closer to the expected uh, Stefan Boltzmann limit there for the pressure. Uh, and so this is more or less what I what I wanted to show you how how these uh, useful quantities can be calculated from the Nambu John and Asmi model. Uh, I hope you understood something. <laughs> And if not, please ask me whatever you want. So, question, comment? I have one. What? So, if you have to correct the model, what do you have to add in order to to complete the, the uh, high, high, high temperature part? Okay. Because there is, there is a mismatch between lattice mm -hmm. and the... Yes. Um, actually, to to correct at high temperatures, I'm not sure what you have to add. Um, one 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 thing you can do to 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 improve this is to to. Uh, to consider instead of this uh, local type of interaction, to consider non-local interaction, uh, because with that we we correct uh, a lot of things, uh, and also it improves a little bit this. But um, also you can we can change the the uh, the thermodynamic potential for the polyacov loop. With that we also can very this, this behavior, uh, but at least for me, it was uh, <laughs> always just uh, trying, like, like trying seeing where I can uh, fit better the lattice data. But it's it's really hard to 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 fit lattice data at the same time at low temperature and at high temperature. And I really, uh, I, I mean, at at low temperature. I can tell you that you can improve what happens if you go uh, beyond mean field uh, approximation. Because if you go to higher orders, you also consider uh, like pion excitations, and that they are, uh, since they are softer, they uh, are excited at lower temperature, so they really modify the, beha the behavior at uh, low temperature. But it, at high temperature, for me at least, is something. So with the local interaction, you mean the four Fermi interaction? The four Fermi, but point-like interaction. Yeah, and what other issues it can solve if you make it non-local? Uh, for example, you can you can confine, yeah. <laughs> and you can also uh, have a propagator that depends on the momentum. Yeah, and then the Lagrangian, how will it change? I mean, yeah. it changed that 
the, the interaction is going to be something that that depends on the position. Uh, you, you have to, I mean, it's not so simple, but you, you can uh, assume some specific j shape of the, of the interaction. Uh, the approximation abuse, abuse is something that is uh, like some kernel that models a one gluon exchange between the fermions. And so you replace this local interaction by, by that. More questions? I have another in the, the, I mean, okay, all this calculation with the non-zero temperature or non-zero densities, uh, which experiment is the, the source of the data in some sense? Like RIG or LHDB or something uh, like that to, to the, have a, the, the feedback? The closest experiment is RIG. When you have a heavy ion collide mm -hmm. collision. Yes. I don't know if there are lines plotted here. No, no, because no, I I had some uh, because we are we are we are now basically studying this region of the diamond. So it depends. So you know, it's it's quite uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> quite, <laughs> quite a big area of the diamond. So it depends uh, on on where uh, you you stand the experiment, but. Uh, For the hadronic yes. phase, mm -hmm. yes. and one more that in, in one of the plots that you have more in advance, that this was a doubt that I have. It. One more. Yeah, here, what is the difference? I mean, why one is potential log and potential poly? There is uh, one is poly and the other. No, the, 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 they are both potentials for the poly loop, mm -hmm. but they are different potentials. So, uh, I I wrote here only one because the, 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 the plots I showed you in the end are calculated with this potential. But there are um, at least three or four potentials I, uh, I, I know from the literature that are used, uh, all of them based on different uh, characteristics of the pure gauge theory. Mm -hmm. um, they, and they more or less they reproduce are data. Mo more or less, but they change stuff like, like the one you asked about the pressure, the behavior of the pressure at high temperature. But it's... Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, because the, the, mm -hmm. the curves are quite different between the, the two cases. Yeah, but um, for, for example, the difference in this, uh, between these two is that uh, the, the one that is poly, that is because it's a polynomial, of course, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's... Uh, it's always smoother, and for is, for instance, the, the difference I don't know in the or the parameters is always that the the you you find uh, soft softer transitions, <laughs> and it's, the difference is going in that direction. Okay, but it doesn't change some key results. No, no, that. because I because we don't actually have like so many key things. To reproduce. I mean, if they all reproduce a crossover transition at zero density, we can we can we can use them. Of course, when we uh, when we are looking for the for the point here in the pyro transition <coughs> line where the transition changes from being crossover to first order transition, yeah, it it it's, it really. Uh, where, is, yeah. where, where, where that point is. But since we have no idea, uh, even if, no, okay, it, it exists, but, <laughs> but we have no idea if, uh, where it is. The, the, there are uh, actually papers that proposed uh, like two uh, 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 critical points, like uh, crossover, first order, crossover, something like mm -hmm. that. So, Still to be discovered. <laughs> it's not easy to <laughs> so, And also, we, we, since we mainly compare results with lattice, and also you know that uh, at uh, final chemical potential, also the the results from, from lattice are mainly extrapolation from results 
at uh, zero chemical uh, potential or even a imaginary chemical potential. Mm -hmm. So this is still underdeveloped. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there are other questions? I don't know, maybe we can thank Valeria. Okay. <laughs> and I guess the next